Okay guys, in today's video, I'm going to be talking you through type one, two, and three closes. I'll be explaining what they are, how we identify them, why they're so important to us, and what we use them for. If you've been watching our channel for a while, you'll be fully aware of these terms because I refer to them a lot, especially in our technical analysis videos. It's a staple part of the way that we do analysis in the Duomo method. And in fact, we even had a video where I was explaining what they are, just like I'm going to be doing now, but within like a broader lesson about significant levels. And it was even linked in the description box of all of our videos. But I'm seeing recently that a lot of people are asking questions about type one and type two closes. So I guess people aren't seeing the old video. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a new one and just clarify everything for everyone. Now, before we get started, it's really important to note that these type one, two and three closes that we're about to talk about is just one of the building blocks that make up the overall approach that we take to trading. So within the Duomo method, we've basically broken everything down into individual building blocks that are then interconnected and interdependent. So just by knowing about type one and two closes doesn't mean you're going to be having excellent trades because you need other aspects that are going to be showing you other information that you need. In fact, these closes only show us two aspects that are going to confirm if it's an interesting situation for us, but it's not going to include the different filters you need to make sure that trade's going to be as dependable as possible. So what I'd recommend you doing is check out the link in the description box for our free inner circle mailing list and by signing up you're going to get access to our four-part video mini series so you can start to learn the foundations of our method and then you'll understand how this building block you're about to learn about now fits into the sort of bigger picture so with that intro out of the way let's now hop over to the charts so i can start the explanation now with these like with this building block of the actual close itself there are just two aspects that we're looking to confirm all other aspects of a su successful trade are confirmed with other areas of our trading but in this one we're looking to confirm two things the first thing is whether the level itself is actually significant if we've got the correct level because for example if we take this baseline trend line up here if you look at all the different variations of how I can map this out, I could have it attached to this wick, I could like, have it down to here, I could even have it mapped across like this. So how do I know for sure? Like, Of course there's ways to confirm that this is right just from sort of mapping it correctly and not having the close at the level, but how can you have further confirmation through the close at the level that a significant level is actually correct? And the second aspect we're looking to confirm with our close so the first is to confirm that the level's correct, and the second is that the price has actually failed at that level. So there's two things. One, that a significant level is actually the correct level, it's significant, and two, that the price has failed at that level. Now for that, we have two different closes that we go for, and I imaginatively named these two different types of closes, type one and type two. So let's take this sort of black horizontal line we've got here. I'm gonna make it a bit clearer for us by drawing a little blue line across it. Now with a type one, let's start with that one. So in a type one situation, the price approaches the significant level like this, reaches it, like touches exactly on that level, and then retreats. And it closes because you have to wait for a close. And this is something you have to keep in mind with all of these, like type one and type two, that the, the candle has to close, that period of time has to close before you determine that that's actually a type one or two close. Because until that happens, anything could happen. So in this case, the price approached that level, that's for, this is going to be a bullish candle, that's the high of that candle, touched the level, comes off it, and closes like this. Let's say it closes here. It's a really well-drawn candle, as you can see. I took art class. I've, I've been learning how to do that really well. <laughs> anyway, in this situation, this is a type one. So we're gonna label that type one. So let's think about the two criteria that I pointed out. First of all, is this confirming, like obviously it can't confirm 100%, but is it giving you more confidence in this specific level being significant? I'd say since it's approached that level and reversed precisely on it, then that's a tick in that box. It's made that level, like it's confirmed that it's significant for us. Because you have to think of things in terms of what could be a coincidence, what is an arbitrary movement, and what is potentially going to be something important there. So if you've drawn a level and the price is reversing exactly off it, you can say, okay, there's less chance of it being luck that that's happened. There's more chance that there's something behind that. And this is what we're always doing with our trading. We've got lines of defense there to try and stop us from entering situations where it might just be an arbitrary movement. We want to make sure that, that movement is because of something. And in this case, that type one close shows that that level's significant. 
And then remember the second aspect. There are two aspects. One, that is confirming that it's significant. And two, that is failed at the level. So it's touched this level and not been able to progress anywhere beyond it. It's literally failed at that level and closed. So in this situation, on a single candle basis, which is, we'll never base it on just a single candle basis. It will be on more aspects. But in this case, you'd expect that probably the next candle is going to be bearish if there are other factors confirming that. But based on the close, that's going to be a type one followed by a bearish candle in that situation. Now, the important thing to note is that if the price is moving towards um, the significant level from below, so it's basically bullish candles approaching, then a type one can only happen if the candle also closes bullish. So for example, if this candle kept moving down and ended up closing as a bearish candle, Yes, it still failed at that, that level up there, but it's not a type one close for us anymore. That level can confirm the significant level for us. So you can use that for making sure that your trend lines and horizontal levels and everything else are mapped out correctly, but you wouldn't use it for a trade entry. So let me just reiterate that. You can use it for making sure that your significant level is drawn correctly. You can use it as an anchor point for that, but you can't use it for a trade entry. So in other words, you wouldn't enter at the close of that candle if this closed bearish because the reversal starts to already happen. Now, I don't want to stray too much in another area of things because it will make this video too long, but basically we're looking for either setup completion or setup break when we have these type one and two closes. And in this case, if it starts to become a bearish candle, it's potentially already had setup completion, which means that there's nothing left for you there. So let's move on to the next situation. In this situation, the price does approach a significant level, but this time it moves through it. So it's broken through the level, but when it comes to actually closing the candle, like at the end of the time period, it closes precisely on the level itself like this. So you can see it's broken through the level, but it's come back to close on the level. So let's think about those two criteria again. First of all, has it confirmed that the level's significant? Yes, it has by closing precisely on that level. Keep in mind that significant levels attract the price as well as repelling the price. There's a video about significant levels. It's in the description box of this video as well as most of our other videos. Um, and it's actually the one where I explained type one and two closes in the first place. But anyway, significant levels attract the price as well as repelling the price. And especially in that last portion of whatever time period it is, the price tends to want to close as a type two on that level if it's nearby. So in this situation, it's confirmed the significance of that level by closing on it. It's confirmed that, that level is important. That's why it's closed on that level. And it's failed at the level because yes, the price went through it, but we don't count that as breaking the significant level because it closed on it. As long as it closes this side of the level, the, the side that it approached from, then it's failure. That's failure at the level. So in this case, this for us is now a type two. So type two. So each of these has confirmed the significance of the level, one by being repelled straight away off it, reversing as soon as it touches it, one by closing on it. And they've both confirmed that there's been failure, one because it reversed straight away, it failed straight away, and the other because it tried to break through and failed coming back through. Now, both of these can confirm those two aspects for us. However, in most cases, and note I said most cases, not all cases, in most cases, the type one is going to be more dependable. That doesn't mean it's going to be a stronger reversal. It just means that it's more dependable, as in it's more likely that what you expect to happen is going to happen. However, there are some situations when that's not the case. For example, when the wick is way too long, like if it's down here, relatively speaking to the size of the other movements like that, like a pin bar type thing, that can sometimes mean that, you know, the price is going to be attracted back to the level and it's going to go against you. And likewise, if there's a long wick through the level, if it's like this coming through the level and then a tiny candle body at the end, then it can be that the price is actually going to be testing from the other side because significant levels have no directional bias. But that's something we'll come on to at another point in time, or you can watch the video about significant levels. So the third type, the type three, is one that is not as dependable as these two. It's one that we don't tend to trade very often, only in certain situations. And that is where the price comes through the level like it did for a type two. But this time when it comes back down, it actually closes a little bit further down. It closes like this. So in this situation, it's if we think about the two aspects, has it confirmed that the level's significant? No, it hasn't. For all we know, the level might be actually further down here, not where we drew it. So it hasn't confirmed that the level's significant, but it has achieved failure. So it has failed breaking through that level. It hasn't confirmed its significance. So obviously the certainty, how dependable it is, is much lower because you haven't confirmed that second aspect. 
So in this case, this one is, as I mentioned, this is a type three. Now, there are all kinds of filters about times we won't enter the trade because keep in mind, right? So I know a lot of people trade price action and they're looking at the individual candles and how big the candle is in proportion to like the, the body of the candle in proportion to the wick and the previous candles and so on. And we do look at that to a certain extent as well. But in any case, it always has to be one of these closes for us to be interested in it in terms of confirming a significant level or getting an entry. And then you look at the other filters in an area of something we call the triad of price action. And we look at the momentum of the candle, what the actual candle itself is showing us and whether that's a filter to not go for the trade or to have a bigger position size or a smaller position size. But that's quite complex to go into in this video. So for now, let's actually go back to the chart as it was before, this US dollar Japanese yen daily chart. And the date today is the 24th of May, 2018, if you want to find this for yourself. We had this baseline trend line and we had a, quite a few touching points off it. So it's a good way to find the type one or type two closes. So let's start from this end. Now, obviously we use the candle bodies and the candle wicks to actually confirm the trend line in the first place. So you can see that first one is actually an anchor point. But if it wasn't, then in this case, based on what I just told you, can you figure out what type of close this is? Now, some of you will be saying that's a type one close, but some of you will remember that I said that it's got to be that the candle closes in the direction that it approached the level. So here, the, the level is above the price and we're approaching in a bullish movement, which means if that's a type one, it has to be closing as a bullish candle like this one did. So that's not a type one, but it can be used to confirm the trend line. Likewise, this one here is not a type one, this bearish candle, because it closes as bearish, whereas this bullish candle is a type three. It broke through the level, but didn't close on it. So let's have a look at the next interactions we have. If we move along a bit further, you can see that here we have another touching point, but it closed as bearish. So it's not a type one, but it could be used to confirm that, you know, by this point we're saying, okay, this trend line could be quite good. It's got a few confirmation points there. Then we see, I think I've zoomed in too much. There we go. This bullish candle. Now you can see there's a gap between where it closes and that trend line. And that's fine. In some situations we wouldn't, like this one I'd count as a type two close, because in some situations we give some slight tolerance to the close on the level itself. Like it depends on the size of the move to the, the level. And this is a gray area that you have to use your, your intuition a little bit, your initiative. Um, but you have to give some tolerance sometimes and say, okay, this is still a type two close because considering the size of the move up to it and you know the angle of the level, maybe there's some slight discrepancy there. Maybe it's slightly drawn wrong. So I'd count that as a type two close there. And then you can see like a few failures at the level again before it starts coming off. So let's move along again. We've got some type three failures there. This again, with some tolerance, I would count this one as type one. If you're zooming out, it would actually look like it's touching there, but it's type one failure. And you can see that it starts to come off that again. Likewise, over here, you can see that that's a type one failure. It's coming right off the, the trend line. So it's failed at it, it's confirmed its significance, and you can see what happens next. And then we come over to what happened more recently, and let's zoom out a little bit. You can see there's a bit of a gap there, so it's not exactly as a type one, but a similar kind of principle, because obviously with some tolerance of the size of the move up, it's debatable whether you'd count this one as a type one or not. But if it was, it's coming up to the level failing and then closing as a bullish candle before the move back down. So essentially in a nutshell that's what we're looking for with the type one and type two closes and the type threes but you have to keep in mind this is one building block like i said so if you're drawing your significant levels and you're going out now trying to find these type one and type one and type two closes you're not always going to succeed because you need to know when to filter out certain entries and stuff like that however if you're using a different method of trading not the duomo method but a different one then maybe you want to consider including these type of closes in your overall approach because all it's going to be doing is confirming that the level you had there was right it's significant and you're confirming that there's failure there and just as a side note i don't want to go into this in too much detail but this doesn't only mean that we trade reversals like what we're always trying to do is to find weakness in a trend so if the price broke through this level then you could trade it when it starts to test from the other side and show that there's no sort of 
no momentum for it coming back to the other side of the trend line so then you can trade the breakout but that's something we covered in a different video at a different time um, i will link it below so you can check that one out as well so that's all for now but don't forget to check out the links in the description box especially for our inner circle mailing list also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and switch on notifications by clicking on that little bell icon that way you're not going to miss out on any more of these videos especially the ones that are really important for that particular day of trading and if you like this video this explanation then please do hit the thumbs up button so i know to bring you more content like this. I really appreciate you watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.